with the flow. Ah, a glass of clear, fresh, delicious water. But get this, the same water I just drank may have been drunk by a dinosaur 50 million years ago. For millions and millions of years, we've been using the same water over and over again. How can that be? Well, Take a look at this. I'm mixing up some used water. Okay. A few minerals. A little bit of salt. Just, and just to give it that extra special touch, food coloring. Let's face it, this stuff is not drinkable. It's salty, it's dirty, it's purple. water in here boils, it evaporates, turns into water vapor, in this case, steam. The steam goes through this tube, and when it does, it cools. As it cools, it turns back into liquid water. But look! The water is clear, fresh, drinkable. The salts, the minerals, the purple stuff are left behind when the water evaporates. This thing nature's cooked up is called the water cycle. All the water in the world keeps on getting recycled. Every day, the ocean's salty water is heated by the sun. The salts stay behind as the water evaporates and forms clouds. Clouds that form over the ocean can travel to land. The clouds are made of water droplets that can fall as snow or rain. When it rains, some of the water falls right back into the ocean. Some of it falls into our lakes, rivers, ponds, and streams. But most of the water we use falls on the ground. Some seeps into the earth, and some runs downhill into streams, lakes, and rivers. Along the way, people and animals and plants use this fresh water and get it dirty. Salts and minerals in the earth get into it too, but the water cycle makes it fresh again. This cycle is going on all the time, all over the world, day after day. Okay, okay, okay. I know what you're thinking. The ocean doesn't boil. So how can the water cycle work? Let me show you. Here's some of that same salty purple water. Pretend this is water in the ocean. And this lamp? Pretend it's the sun. It's not going to make the water boil, but it is going to heat it up. We'll come back to it in a little while to see what's happened. When the water from the ocean evaporates, condenses, and falls back as snow or rain, it feeds our supply of fresh water. It helps make tiny ponds and great big rivers. Robin found out more about it. 
I've come to Rocky Mountain National Park to make a search. What I'm looking for is the answer to a question. How does a river get started? To find out, I have to go high into the Rocky Mountains, looking for the beginning of the Colorado River. These mountains are the backbone of America. They form the Continental Divide. A drop of water falling on the eastern side of the mountains flows into the Atlantic Ocean. And a drop of water falling on the western side eventually flows into the Pacific. High in the mountain snowfields, park ranger Anna Fender shows me how the Colorado River begins. It starts up in the mountains in the different snow fields and the streams and they all flow down into the valley and form the river. The snow that you're seeing now that's left in the mountains fell last winter uh -huh. and now it's just beginning to melt and start running into the streams and in a meadow like this the snow can be six or eight feet deep mm -hmm. and then up in the mountains it can be 20 or 30 feet deep oh, and see. then in the springtime when it warms up mm -hmm. the snow that's down here melts relatively quickly mm -hmm. and the snow that's up in the mountains where it's cooler uh -huh. melts slowly Oh, so over the whole summer, it's melting very slowly and keeps feeding into the streams and on into the river and on down. Mm -hmm. At that elevation, that's where you pick up the beginnings of your streams, the uh -huh. little drips coming off the snow fields, the water running out from under the snow into little rivulets, mm -hmm. and then into little streams that come down those valleys. And all those little snow fields up there have little rivulets and streams coming off of them. They come together to form bigger streams that will eventually come on down into this valley and then help form the Colorado River down here in the bottom of the valley. Interrupt the Colorado River for a progress report. Hey, looks like the water has begun to evaporate. In the real world, water like this collects in clouds. Then it falls as rain onto the ground and into lakes and streams and rivers, like the Colorado. But how does that fresh water get to us? Here's how people in one city, New York, get their water. A drop of water falls into a lake. That drop has just entered the New York water system. Water is collected in a number of mountain reservoirs. From there, the water begins a long journey, rushing downhill to New York. The city uses over a billion gallons of water every day. Here the water goes underground. Two large underground tunnels carried the water into the city. Here's the third tunnel being built. wind through the city like streets. Then smaller pipes carry water to each building. New York has tall buildings. 
Sometimes water is pumped up to a tank on the roof. And from there to people's homes. Hey, take a look. The water is really condensing up around the top and the sides of the bubble. And you will please notice that it isn't purple anymore. It's clean and fresh, thanks to evaporation. The water cycle is simple, and it works great. But we put a lot of stuff in our water that isn't so great. Pollution. In fact, some of the stuff we put in gets into the water even before the water gets to the ground. This kind of pollution goes up in smoke from factories, gets dissolved in rainwater, and comes down as acid rain. To learn about acid rain, I traveled high into the Adirondack Mountains in New York State to Woods Lake with forest ranger Bill Marlow. Bill has lived in this area his whole life and has a cabin on the lake. This is beautiful. I love it. It's so quiet and peaceful here. Gradually, I realized there was something wrong. The lake was too peaceful. There is practically nothing alive out here in this water. There is no plant life growing in the water. It, uh, uh, the lake is dead. Is there a reason for it? I believe it was acid rain. Uh to explain to me that scientists suspect that acid rain is caused by the burning of coal, gas, and oil. They give off waste materials such as ashes and also gases. And as we all know, what goes up must come down. Let's just turn this coal burning power plant upside down. See, we're using the sky for a dump. It's up here that a complex chemical change takes place. The gases cool and mix with the moisture in the clouds, and an acid solution is formed. It falls back down to the earth as acid rain. To learn more about acid rain, I went to see Dr. Harry Hamilton at the Atmospheric Research Center on Whiteface Mountain. What does this do? This is our cloud water collector. And the cloud droplets are caught, and then we bring them down and analyze the water that comes out of the cloud. Well, Mark, what are we getting today? 3.64. Is a pH balance of 3.64 very acidic? Robin, that's about 100 times as acidic as we would expect to get in cloud water in an unpolluted region. I can't believe that all these trees are dead. Well, many of them are dead and others are dying early. What can we do to stop all this? We're dealing with a very complex problem. We need to try to understand how the gases get transformed into the acidic rain. And once we have that, we may be able to develop a control strategy. All the water in the world is constantly being recycled. The water cycle is a natural process that makes water clean and fresh. Salts, minerals, and all the other things that get into water are left behind when water evaporates. But often, people pollute water in ways the water cycle can't handle. 321 Classroom Contact is a production of the Children's Television Workshop.